What is up, techies? My Get Technical family, how we doing this fine Monday? It's producer AB here. Neil will be here in a minute. I got the Boston beer chart pulled up. If you heard me on Power Hour, I gave this as a, uh, you know, my new stock pick right now. Let me show you what I'm seeing here. Let me, let me see if you guys see what I'm seeing in the chat, right? This is the one-year chart on the dailies. We're sitting back here at 580 a share. Expensive stock, yeah, but I can buy fractional shares. Um, you know, so let me, let me know what you guys see in the chat. I'll, I'll wait for this little, uh, you know, there's a little lag. So I'll wait for your, your the answers to start flying in. Mikey, do I have a stop loss? I'm actually not in it yet. I'm just looking to make an entrance uh, today. So when I do open a position, I will set a stop, a stop loss. Happy asking in the chat that I listen to Donda. Not yet. Elon saying he doesn't like it. All right, that's fair. Daniel saying pub 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 M is a better chart. Let's check out that one. Ooh. Yeah, I mean this one's gotten beaten down. We've seen it hit the same uh same level of support a couple times now. Looks interesting, Daniel. Let me know how you're playing that. My screen is too dark to see. They're going to complain no matter what. My screen is too dark. Oh, if the, if the screen is too light, they complain. If it's too dark, they complain. And if it's gray, nobody's happy. All right. We've got like Skynet here talking to us over the intercom. Yes, this is Skynet from the Terminator movies. Oh, I can see if uh, Mr. Uh, Schwarzenegger it can make another appearance. Yeah, I want to hear from that Investor Stallone guy. Investor yeah, Stallone? Investor Stallone had some good ideas. He did. He did indeed. I want to hear what Investor Stallone thinks about hims. Hims? What do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know if if Mr. Stallone is worried about you know his hair falling out yet. He takes he takes great care of himself. Yeah, but you know he's getting kind of old. He might need that that uh, what do you call it? Generic Viagra. Oh, the blue pill. Yeah, they send it to you in the mail. He might make need- it nice and easy, discreet packaging. Look at that bottom. Do you think it found its bottom? I don't know, Neil. It looks a little juicy to me. I don't know this Neil guy, but it does look juicy. Yeah, I mean, ooh, we could have room to run here. Hey, and now that you mentioned that Neil guy, he's been talking about LAC a lot, and I don't know if any of these guys and girls have looked at LAC. He's been screaming about it. You know, no one's been trading it. That Neil guy, he can be right every now and again. I see this stock is up about almost five percent today. Yeah, that Neil guy's okay. He's, he's all okay. right. He's okay. Uh what about up? Uh, what about that Palantir? Oh, is that a good one? You know, I've been seeing a lot of kids on the street talking about this. Uh, yeah, they they do some government tracking. Yeah, this is the one with that CEO that likes to dress up like Willy Wonka. Yeah, this one's looking nice. Yeah. Look at that. Why don't you zoom in over the past, like, I don't know, 10 days? Wow, yeah. We Look at What's it doing there? It looks like it's breaking out of that, that little consolidation. Oh, I, I I would agree with that. I think uh, you know this next level that I'd keep my eye on is up here at this you know about twenty seven fifty and see if we hit some resistance there. 
But if we blow through it, oh man, this uh, Palantir could could do some things. Impressive stuff. Impressive stuff. And we got Bruin here. Bruin's confused. Bruin says, Bruin writes to us, I have no idea what's happening. I'm so confused. I'm not if this is funny or so bad it's funny. I think you forgot a word, Bruin. Oh, Bruin, you can't be doing that. You write into us. You got to have all the words there. <laughs> Finish your sentence, Bruin. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on one sec. All right. All right, Bruin. Hey, AB. Hey. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Oh, wow. The clean baby face Neil over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we that was a little uh, a little session, guys. Um, the stock market rules right now. Um, what are your, what are your guys' favorite tickers? Everything is working. Um, if you can't make money in this market, um, I feel bad for you, uh, <laughs> because everything's going up. Um, let me tell you my move. I just, who, who, give me a one in the chat. If you like selling puts, give me a one in the chat. If you like selling puts from time to time, selling, selling some puts. All right, we got we got some tickers. I'm loving that we're getting some tickers. I'm watching the Spy G. Spy G is my new little baby. I love it. So, so this takes the trade. this takes the growth companies out of the S and P. Yeah, this is basically the Fang ETF. This is just Microsoft. Okay, <laughs> just Microsoft and Apple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, everyone likes selling puts. Some, yeah, it absolutely rules. Damn sure one, love it. Um, oh, you, uh, Eugenio, you're short in Roblox. I don't get. Is Roblox like the platform of the video game in future, or just um, some ambitious business owners exiting and cashing in? So I, I, the thing that I like about Roblox is that if you talk to anyone, you call up, you call up Uncle Raz right now, and you say, "Hey, what's Joshy Boy playing?" Yeah, yeah, he yeah. says Roblox. So anytime someone says like their kids just can't get enough of something, that's a good sign for me. Um, but yeah, essentially it allows kids to like create their own games. It's almost like a Unity, you know. I think Unity kids and Roblox are way too dumb for that. I mean, you'd be surprised. Some of these kids now, they're like on the computer since they were born, so they know how to wor work around it. Elon Musk in the chat saying uh, video stocks keep going down. There was some news out of China. Did you see that, Neil? What was the, what's the, the uh, ESPO was my baby um, over the summer. Loved it. And it is just a sideways mess. Um, Esports, uh, ETF. Yeah, I don't see any. And then Activision has, is just getting cleaned out for ethical sh shiz. Um, well, yeah, yeah it's I, that. And then also this news out of China, which I don't know if you saw, Neil, but essentially no. ch China is restricting the amount of video games kids can play. Which is like, okay, it doesn't sound too crazy, but wait till you hear what it is. Monday through Friday, no video games at all. Weekends, you get one hour each day. That's right. <laughs> Dude, I don't know about you, but uh, like, as a, on a kid as weekends, I would spend like eight hours on the same game trying to beat like Zelda Ocarina of Time, you know, like one hour each day on a weekend is not it, enough time to get any progress on any game. You can't. That's like two save points. Right. That's like <laughs> one save point. And, uh, yeah, then imagine you, you close the game without saving after you grinded for like your one hour that you were allotted, and then you got to do the whole thing again. Uh, yeah, well, that that is a pretty austere and not a good... That does not bode well for the, the gaming industry in one of the largest markets on the planet. That is that is true. Um, yeah, Hurt Scrambler is all about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, they play minecraft daniel says i thanks I, I don't i don't know really what that means <laughs> oh, Maddie, minecraft Ma not a video game maddie g's asking a good question in the chat um if apple i'm assuming that's apple can, can you get it back up wait it, it was the wrong oh here we go oh what shampoo do i use um uh nizzerol 
shampoo. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great for dandruff. Supposed to keep your hair from falling out. Use it every day. Uh, <laughs> um, and this is why China will be our overlords in the future. Yeah. We've uh, we've had a good run as the world empire. Dude, well, I'm, time, I'm, to, time to give it up to China. If it, if it means being able to play video games in a free country, I'm fine with it. You know, we'll, we'll take second as long as we get to keep our games. I don't let my kids play Roblox because it has too much crap on. Yeah, that's right, Daniel. It does have a lot of crap on it. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I guess I guess we should do it. We should play Roblox on stream on Friday, fun day and just see what the freaking deal is. Um, all right, all right, all right. So we, I asked you guys for some tickers. You guys dropped some tickers. We want to take a look. Um, I'm not going to sit here and brag about how all of my picks are doing exactly what I said they would do. It's not like I can see the future, um, uh, but I'm but. just so damn good. That's just all it is. Um, Palantir breaking out. Uh, Unity in this nice little uh, uh, bull pennant. Best best most reliable pattern on the planet looking like it's getting ready to break that young neckline coming out of that rounding bottom going into the markup phase unity um the gamers are going to start a revolution in china um, you know what fight for freedom i support i support um okay 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 so what were some of the tickers l-a-m-e is not a ticker lamo Joseph, Lameo. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What, what were we getting? Drop your tickers again, because I can't scroll up. My finger hurts. Um, Etsy. We'll get Etsy. Elon Musk. Are you the same person that was um, Gavin Newsom the uh, like last week? Oh, Elon Musk. I want to go. Okay. Okay. Never mind. What is with Elon Musk's hair? um like in general yeah he just got the best hair plugs ever yeah i mean that's what having millions and millions of dollars will do for you i guess so i guess so it's just indistinguishable it's so like they did such a damn good job of he so so usually they take like follicles from like the person's back of their head and put it like on the front but elon musk probably like went out and found the person with like the best hair follicles and was like, yeah, we're going to scalp him. Give me that. It was his employees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he just bought someone to, staff. for their hair. <laughs> uh, okay. Etsy on the one week. Etsy on the one day. What is this line? Wow. That's really weird. Oh, that line just showed up. Oh, let me turn off these EMAs as well. I'll turn off the Bellinger band as well. We'll just look at the price. Yeah, Etsy looks like it's broken out of this little thing. So what do guys throw me in the chat? Employee ties. Yeah, the, yeah, straight up feudal. Straight up feudal. Um, let me know in the chat what pattern am I about to draw on Etsy on the daily chart? Here, what do we see happening here? It's a reversal pattern. Quiz of the day. Which reversal pattern? Hey, 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 I'm live on stream right now. Hey. I'm live on stream. Hi. Never mind. Wait. All right. All right. I'll talk to you in an hour. Talk to you in an hour. Bye. Uh, um, all right, guys. What pattern am I about to draw? I don't think Jason will go bald. He just gets shock gray hair. <laughs> it's like it's like he has every single follicle that he's had since he was 10. Yeah. Uh, it's a reversal pattern, Mikey. That's correct. Wait, is he Thank talking you. about Elon's hair? <laughs> no, well, you're talking about Jason. Better hope Jason never goes bald. No, I'm saying my, the reversal pattern. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Elon got a hair transplant from the mane of a million dollar Arabian horse. Yeah, that's a good idea. Wouldn't doubt it. By the way, I was looking up the okay, other you day. Guys, you guys are not, no one is participating in this. That's fine. Nope, nope. We got it, Benjamin. Nope. There, yeah, just do it right here. I have no idea, man. Um, yeah, we got a little ascending triangle. 
This is this counts as an accumulation phase. Um, very very nice. If you got in down here on this this sloping line of support, you're a real trader. Real traders in the chat. Real trader. Um, but looks like um, we're hitting some resistance here. Let's put on uh, the old volume prof. Um, was it V? It's got a weird name on here. Um, there we are. Um, oh, yeah. Feeling good about this. Etsy looking good, guys. The timing might not be right now because it had such a good run. Like, this is a great run. Look at this. This is the daily chart. It just ran for 24% over a couple weeks. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking all-time highs here pretty soon. Um, Abdu wants to know if it will run. You want <laughs> okay? So, here we get technical. We are at your service, Abdu. You think it'll run more or what? I'm trying to buy some new Yeezys. Yeah, <laughs> all right, bro. He's like, shut up about your patterns, just tell me if I should buy this or not. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you that. Uh, I think here, let's, let's put the Bollinger on it. Um, BB. Um, it looks uh, looks extended to me. I think this is not the best time to get in. But I'm not going to, you know, if you want to chase, keep a tight stop. You've got your line right here at 217 and a half. You want this? You want this stock to show us that this line can become support. Okay. Oh, Paul. Yeah, I forgot we were doing the Rifter thing. I didn't study it at all. So according to this, it could keep riding, right? But isn't it better entry if it dips down? So the Ripster clouds, isn't it good a better entry if it dips down into this? Don't we want a pullback to enter? Um, that's uh, that's kind of what I would look for on any anything. Here, let me turn off the Bollinger Band so it's more clear. We just have these uh, cool um, exponential moving averages um, with the space in between them shaded in. Um, Ripster, a, a really, really successful and popular trader. You can find him on, on Twitter. Um, calls them clouds. Um, and let's see. So, so Paul saying, yes, wait for the dip. Dip to 13. Wait, dip to 13. Wait, is that one of these clouds? Oh, it is. Um, Abdu is saying wait for the dip. Dip to 21 AMA. E EMA, rather. Why does everyone like chasing so much? It's human nature, my friend. It is human nature. It's called FOMO. Uh, buy within or under the Bollinger Bands trays, a uh, uh, old school like me with the Bollinger Bands, which it's extended out of. That's this green olive line. Um, 13 EMA. Yeah, let me add just a pure 13 uh, EMA so that I can see where it is on the Rifster thing. All right, so I'm going to turn off BB. I'm going to change my this EMA, EMA to 13. Ah, ah, so it's got to dip in. Okay, so the 13 EMA... Um, is like the lower bracket of this cloud right here. Um, so we're looking for a dip back into that. Okay. Is the bottom side of the top cloud. Um, yeah, Paul, we're on the same page. I'm I'm scooping what you're pooping, Paul. Um, okay, so there you go. Okay, so let's keep using these things. I'm excited about this. Um, what, what, what ticker should we try using these on? Uh, STBC, we got to give him an elbow cough, Aaron. <coughs> um, uh, you want to, okay, let's try it on Disney. Disney. This is the company that, of course, produces many cartoons, such as Mickey Mouse. Oh. You don't say. Um, wow, Disney. What have you been up to? It's like some uh, consolidation to me. 
very, very choppy behavior. And I did just get word from uh, Rippy Rip that we should be good for Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, of course, tomorrow and Wednesday, there will be no show because of a crypto conference that Benzing is hosting. Sick. Which you can find Neil as a keynote speaker, not keynote, but yeah. If you want, if you want to see the the uh, clash of the ponytails, um, I'll be doing a, a session with John Nigerian talking about uh, trading options on cryptocurrencies, which is uh, fascinating stuff. I have a lot of questions for him. Talk. That's speaking of hair plugs, John Nigerian. That's my future. Like, I'm not doing Arabian horsehair on the top of my head. I'm going full skull it. Tied back with the the, uh, the braid on the back. Greased up. So, it, so I, there's no flyaways. Slick. You see me drive by in my convertible later in life? My, con- my Corvette convertible? A little flash from that ponytail is going to make it crash. Yeah. I'm just going to go everyone's favorite doctor, astronaut, Fireman, police officer, teacher. Johnny Sins? Yeah. Just go full chrome. <laughs> oh, <what is> <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. <laughs> Elbow cough. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah. Disney just looks like Tra- Chop City is getting caught in this like consistent area of resistance. Um, if you want to use the Ripster clouds, it, it, guys, let me know. Anyone that follows Ripster's uh, kind of way of trading, um, uh, aren't these clouds best when you're in a clear trend, like an upward trend? Like this is completely sideways. Aren't they? Isn't it best when you're in a trend? So you guys are telling me that if this thing dips down into this green band or cloud, whatever, if it dips down into here, that's a buy zone. As long as it doesn't crash down past it. Give me a one if that's accurate. Yeah, so Paul saying clouds are for trends. So sideways, sideways, this is not tremendously helpful. Um, this is just noise, I think, when it's straight and sideways like this. Um, Captain Cappy confirmed. All right, so we got two confirmations from uh, some Ripster experts. Um, okay, so so that's it's just noise when it's sideways like this. Um, this looks like Chop City to me, um, but you could look at this sloping line of support. So I, th- we're doing this old school way, not Mister Ripster, um, just Neil. Um, I would have no problem buying this thing if it bounces off of this clear sloping line of support and playing in this channel if you really want to play Disney. Um, Born to be free. We will have Ripster. Uh, AB confirmed with Ripster. He's going to come on the show this week. Yep, on Thirsty Thursday. So bring your Margs, whatever you're sipping on. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Um <clears throat> Okay, so what's another ticker that we want to try the Ripster uh, uh, clouds on? Some Ideally something in a trend. Disney looks all right on weekly. Eh. STBC is throwing out Target, TGT. That's uh, we can do TGT. TGT. Yeah, our esteemed guest Chris Capri actually has some thoughts on uh, TGT as well. Is Chris here? Okay. Of course. All right. Um. Yeah. TGT. Your boy's in it, and according to the Ripster trading method, which of course, as you guys know, we have guests on the show, and we borrow different trading strategies. We try them out, see how they work for us. Um. Guys, let me know. Is this is this a buy signal for for Target on the one week? Can it? Can I do the one week? Is that okay? Is that allowed? Oh no! Is it? Is this a? Is this a short signal on the daily? <laughs> we'll have to it, ask Ripster on Thursday. It, it changed on the weekly. It looks like <laughs> it looks like we're going long target. On the daily, it's changing colors on me. What oh do man! I do, what do I do when it gets down to the blue ribbon, guys? Chairman Kim just dropped my favorite stock. 
build a bear workshop. Okay. <laughs> um, see how it bounces off bottom of cloud. All right, so it didn't bounce. Oh, so we want to see if it bounces off this blue one, right? I just don't think it'll keep ripping like that. I mean, yeah, that's a looks like a loss of momentum for the time being. What do the kids say about stocks only going up? Is that still true? Dude, I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty green out there today. I like how like some of the like the dooms, doom and gloom people are like, oh, I'm going out buying VIX with all this like uncertainty in Afghanistan and uh delta variant it's like markets don't care yeah they the market seem to only really care about what um the fed says right mr now. mr powell yeah um okay we've got one minute and we're going to bring on one of our most illustrious guests mr chris capri um oh yeah so apple aapl are you the only one red today I think a lot of folks, Eugenio, that are are in larger stocks are doing pretty okay today because spies up or just like just larger stocks are up. If you're more of a penny stock person or um, just plain out reckless, maybe you are, are red today. Um, wow. Holy crap, Apple. Wait, why is Apple up so much? I, give me the fundamentals. Do you know um, is it Apple, Apple car rumors? No, I mean the company. There's like a rumor that them and Global, that Apple and Global Star are getting into something, but I don't think that would make what is Apple Global move Star, that much. What is Global Star? Isn't that like satellites? Oh, wait, like they what might is like, the ticker? Is that a GSAT? Ah, GSAT. Yeah, okay, I heard about that. Um, I, I mean, I, it could just be a purely technical move. No, not like that for Apple. Maybe. I don't know. That's a huge candle. It's like the hugest candle it's had since. I mean, let's see. Oh, okay. Here we go. Apple buys classical music service Prime Phonic. <laughs> okay. Um, well, on the weekly, Apple looks really, 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 really strong on the weekly. course calls are going to be the most expensive thing you've ever bought but apple looking good spy g baby um and look in the it's floating above the cloud so then this would there would have been some good buying opportunities here if you were doing the cloud thing um, dude i don't know there's no way it's this it's this classical music thing right who no, knows i don't know yeah that's Unless, what i'm saying i think it's the apple car rumors right guys give us re why is apple up today People, some people are saying the prime phonic thing, but it's no way buying some catalogs of Mozart and look how much uh, GSAT's up. Um, Chris Capri will know; he knows everything. Guys, we're bringing on now one of our most illustrious guests. So, so loosen up your sweatpants, get comfortable, sit back, um, uh, heat up that coffee. It's time to get really serious. Um, Chris Capri, well, oh. Aaron, did we do the thing where we? You, you, it yeah, you clicked it after I clicked it. Very hey, serious. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are we doing? Uh, pretty good. Today's a, a good day all around. I think a lot of folks can agree. Um, yeah. Well, we're past the Powell situation, and I think you know what we're seeing in the options market is that leading up to Powell, we were seeing puts gain in or actually get more expensive. That means traders are buying protection just in case. But since it was kind of a nothing burger as a whole, then puts are going to be sold this week. And so that's just going to really kind of give more upside fuel and pressure to spies and cues, which was what we're seeing. So, yeah, it's a, I think it's going to be a good week for the markets. I think it'll be a bullish week for it. Unless we get some new event coming in, I'm expecting spies and cues to be up. I think you're going to see more volatility in cues than you will spies. And so... Um, but I, I expect it to be a bullish week for you know the markets as a whole. So unless some new harbinger comes out, I think we should be expecting mostly a green week. 
Excellent. So there you go, guys. Um, so, Chris, are there any particular names you're looking at this week? Yes. And <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let's start with Qs. I think there's some day trading opportunities here on Qs. Um, I'm liking the volatility on Qs a little bit better right now. And it's, you know, even though Spies is pretty much the same structure, um, I feel a little bit more bullish about Qs because tech was kind of, kind of under pressure recently and now it's i feel like that pressure has been released on it so i like buying cues on a day trading pullback could be today or whatever to the weekly vwap right now which is clocking in at 379.32 it's almost perfectly matched up with the session vwap on the five minute chart which is 379.24 so i think any dips to that um i would look as a buying opportunity um, and you know, I could do September 3rd expiry and just get long calls because the volatility is not crazy in queues right now. So, you know, that means that the premium is going to be pretty affordable. And, you know, right now, if we look at September 3rd expiry, so let's say we do like a 280, if it dips to 279 and a quarter right now, the three or sorry, 380, the three eighties are priced at 209 bid to 11 ask it's a 52 Delta. So if we go down about a dollar from here, then this these calls will be about a 50 cents cheaper. So you're talking about 160 basically for long calls at 380. And so I think that would be a pretty safe play for the rest of the week. I like that idea being just long calls. You know, IV is super low right now, 11%. So you're not paying a premium to be long options right now or long calls or long puts, you know, whichever direction you decide. And so I think we want to take advantage of that low volatility and say, hey, let's let's, you know, let's take just just take a straight long gamma play. So my first one is really mostly a day or short term swing trade for the week. Get long calls on a dip to the session or weekly view up on cues. Um, snap. I actually think snap is going to be a fade, um, even though the overall long term trend is bullish. What I'm seeing is, is that snap, you know, very big earnings impulsive rip definitely resistance around 79 had a little bit of floor but it faded this here and impulsive corrective impulsive made a low low then we made a higher low here so that tells me that if we were to break above this like even if we have a higher base here and we break above this it's going to run into some resistance anybody who's long at 72 or even 75 they're going to take profit you know, if we get to $79, they're going to take profit on that because we've only spent literally one hour since, you know, the last, what is that? Since a month ago, we've only had one hour of price action above the 79. So I feel like snap is a fade. I was considering maybe 76, but I actually like, you know, as soon as we get to like 78, I think snap is a fade. The problem with snap going straight, you know, fade like long puts that IV is decent right now. It's not great, but it's decent at 47 and a half percent. And so when I look at that, I feel like, OK, you know, the 78s are priced 365 bid 380 ask. And, you know, we're talking that if this was these are the puts. So if we were to get to 78, the current delta is about 78 cents. So these things should come down to about a dollar fifty if we were to get up to seventy eight. Then I think you know around a dollar fifty for the put, you could get long puts um, and just have you know a stop loss above if we get a flick above this here, or you could sell a bear call spread. You could you know you could sell a vertical, which would be you know if we get to seventy eight, if we get up here towards the end of the week, you'd sell the calls at seventy nine, and I think you could put the uh, strike you get long at 81 because that's where the spike was here. So you sell the 79s, get long the 81s. You wouldn't want to do that right now because we're too far away from the calls and the calls would be really cheap right now. But as the price builds up into this, then those calls will get more expensive. Therefore, we'll collect more premium. And Snap, from an options perspective, is there's not a whole lot rolling off till September 17th. So we don't have to worry about short term options kind of having an effect on this. But when I look at it, I feel like 80 is where the dealers and market makers, they start hedging this. In other words, that there really isn't enough fuel for in the market right now to get beyond 80. And if prices go up, 
dealers who actually start selling Snap instead of buying Snap. There are certain situations where the market goes up and the dealers have to buy Snap, but there are situations where the market goes up and the dealers will start selling Snap or selling Snap shares. So I feel like between 79 and 80, that's where their hedging activity takes place. And so, yeah, I like Snap on a fade. On a short-term basis, this would be a play for this week. My third play, um, support. As y'all know, support has just kind of gone bananas in the last week. Um, literally, let's look at the weekly chart. In one week, the stock went from 9 to 60. That's not sustainable. That was mostly, it wasn't any positive news catalyst or anything like that. That was just, hey, this is a potential short squeeze play. And they did it. Mission accomplished. They short squeezed it. But what I'm seeing now is that supports in a situation where the options are too expensive to create the short squeeze fuel that it did last week. And I think there's going to be some traders that are inexperienced and in believing, hey, support's just going to keep ripping, 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 ripping. Yeah, we're not seeing that today. Support's doing nothing on the day. And when I look at support, I look at two charts that really kind of tell me what's going on. This is your parabolic move and literally happened over two days. But look at what happened at the end of the session. Support got overextended and sold off massively. So literally from 60 to 25 in two hours. That tells me that the short squeeze was over. The option fuel was over. That's it. And when I look at this, I see a dead cat bounce. And you can see it a little more clearly on the five-minute chart. You can see the impulsive corrective structure of this. So where is the impulsive move? To the downside. Corrective bounce. Market opens. This is flat. So there may be some inexperienced people that are thinking, oh, we're going to get back to 52 or 60. Let's keep squeezing this. But we're not seeing this in the movement. And so that tells me that dealers are now positioned and have changed volatility and premiums so that they don't have to worry about another short squeeze again. The structure and the architecture isn't there and the options for that to happen. I think support's a fade. And so with our members, we did a uh, put fly on this one here. Because IV is expensive, I don't think you want to get long puts right now. You'd be overpaying for puts. Um, but there is a potential volatility play. If you think support is going to have no volatility for the rest of the week leading into Labor Day holidays, maybe sell a straddle. The premium is still incredibly high. So when I look at support, sadly, it doesn't have weekly options. It only has a monthly OPEX of so September 17th. But right now, the 37s are selling for about $11 on the call side and you're talking almost $13 on the put side. So that means we're talking $24 worth of credit and you're going to get 30 to 40 cents of theta each day. But where this really would take advantage is let's say support does nothing for the rest of the week, all the way through Friday. Let's say it at best makes it down to 25 or at best makes it up to 48. Well, your straddle's still in the money, but here's what you're going to get. You're going to get about, between now and the end of the week, you're going to get about $2 in theta decay. But because there's a holiday on Monday and the markets aren't open, you're going to get Friday, Saturday, and Sunday theta decay as well. And volatility is going to decrease going into Friday. And that means it's going to be a slow start on Tuesday. So if you have the cajones to hold a straddle through Tuesday next week, you could collect $3 in theta decay alone. And that's assuming that the market, you know, has some movement to it. If it doesn't, then, and the implied volatility comes down from 346%, then you're going to make money on volatility alone. So I think there, I have a way that I've traded it with my members. I shared my trade on that, but I think you could sell some volatility on this. I think this thing is just going to kind of sputter for the next, for the rest of the week. So those are the three plays I like. Um, and with that being said, I think we could probably go to some live Q&A. Yeah. Sure. Real quick, before we start taking tickers out of the chat, Chris, yeah. I was going to ask you um, to do a quick analysis on a stock that I've been looking at because I saw something in the yeah. chart um, and then it hasn't really been reacting today as I anticipated it would. Um, so I want to know if, if you think this is kind of a, a sign that I should bomb out of the trade um, or if you think I, could, I should hold strong. And the ticker is SMG, yeah. Scott's Miracle Grow. Um, uh, so if you go out to a kind of like year long daily chart. You see a big double top that is that is fully resolved, played out. 
Um, and then I saw it catching support here at this, you know, around 155 level. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it could, it could drop down to that 150 flat. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of expecting a little run up back to that like 180 level where we see that where it, it had consolidated for a couple, maybe like a week or so before that, before it dropped a little bit further. Okay. Um, so I was just playing this with like some 170 calls, I think a couple months out. I think I had like November 17th expiration date or something like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, the calls are getting beat up today. The stock's down about a percent and a sure. half. And sure. I, I've been debating just bombing out of them, cutting my losses. But I also think, you know, if the market's looking good for the rest of the week, we could see it come up a few bucks from here. Okay. So is it what a November expiry? November yeah. OPEX? Okay. All right. So let me tell you what's going on in the option universe. SMG is not a big option volume company. Before today, we had about 9,000 calls and maybe 5,000 puts. So that's a that's very small in terms of options, especially for a stock that is, you know, a three-digit stock. In terms of today's option statistics, we could only add another 200 options. So there's not a lot of people, there's, there's no institutional eyes on this right now that's saying, hey, we think, you know, SMG is a great buy today or at the current prices. So that's what we're seeing in terms of, we're just not seeing the volume. So it's not attracting institutional interest. And the total volume of shares, 122,000, is about a third of the normal 10-day volume. So just from today's perspective, nobody's got their eyes on SMG, at least on an institutional level. Um, when I look at the option structure, let me take a look at November OPEX and September OPEX real quick. And where are you going to get the uh, you know option flow? So the OCC, the Options Clearing Corp, they publish data at midnight, just after midnight every single night. And we have our own kind of proprietary program that collates that data and then creates statistics for me to kind of read that really fast. If you don't have access to the OCC and you have to be, you have to subscribe to OCC or Oprah to get that data basically, um, then you'd have to go through your broker like Thinkorswim and then you'd have to start doing manually the calculations. And so we just kind of built a program that calculates it all for us so I don't have to do the math. Um, so yeah, otherwise, if you can't do it from, if you can't sign up through subscriptions because you'd have to get it through Oprah and OCC, then you would have to go through Thinkorswim or something like that and then manually do it. Um, okay, so Thinkorswim, yeah, again, not a lot of options today. Okay, let's look at, so here's what I'm seeing on this. The largest gamma kind of expiry in terms of strike, and again, we're only talking about 14,000 options out there. So it's not, the data is not going to be as thick as something that has like 100, 500,000, a million options. Um, it's saying like the largest gamma strike out there, and that's only a handful of options, is September up X basically. But there's some traders who are making some long-term bets. There are some March 18th, 2022 option bets out there. So some long-term bets. And if I had to guess, I think some people probably bought the 150s, maybe the 155s, maybe the 160s um, and thinking, hey, six months, nine months out, this should be above this price. Um, when I look at November, there's almost, there's like two options that have been purchased on the day for the November expiry. So, so not a good sign for me. <laughs> no, your long calls and you, you are also, you know, you have theta exposure. When, and so being long calls, um, you know, you don't have to worry about theta being November 19th. You're not going to have much theta decay on the day, but you are long gamma. And when do you, when you're long gamma, what is it that you want to happen? Uh, you want it to go up quickly, right? Yes. Yes. So gamma, when you're long options, you have positive gamma, you have a positive gamma approach. And when you're long calls, every single dollar that it goes up, gamma accelerates for you. So like right now, your, let's say I was long the 150 calls right now. Okay, right now the gamma is three cents. And so the delta is 80, the gamma is three cents. That means I get 83 cents for each dollar. But if SMG starts ripping, the gamma starts to accelerate in my favor. That means it starts increasing three cents, four cents, five cents. That's why the current 160 strikes are four cents and the 150s are three cents. So as the market moves in your direction, gamma accelerates in your favor. 
So you're long gamma and you need it to move fast. What affects gamma is moneyness and volatility. And so, and time, of course. But if you don't have to worry about time and moneyness, you're kind of near the at the money, then what you really need is volatility for gamma to accelerate. And you're not getting volatility. There's no stock traders really watching this. There's no option traders really watching this. So really being long gamma at the 170s, I think it's too early. I think if you got back to 150, there might be a decent play for it. You know, we've already bounced $10 off of that, but we've stuck right at the monthly VWAP and now we're selling off. So me personally, it's not that this couldn't turn around, but I wouldn't want to be long gamma above this far above support. Would I be considered, would I be open to long gamma at 150? Possibly, depending upon the option structure is at that time. So yeah. That's my thoughts on that. If it was me personally, I would unwind it. I would just be like, hey, you know, unwind this and move on. Got it. So I guess, you know, with that being said, then next time I'm, I'm looking at a contract like this, I should do some, you know, more research and seeing our institutions kind of seeing what I'm seeing. Um, is there volume there? Because if, if, if the volume's not there, you know, like you said, either on the stock side or the option trade, um, th then it just, it doesn't bode well for the trade. It would have to be the only way it would bode well is if you have some insight that the institutional market doesn't, you have some idea that the institutional market doesn't, and maybe they're just not looking at it at the time because their eyes are somewhere else. There are times where I've gotten in trades where I felt like, you know what, this, I'm not buying this. So this is going to move right now. I'm buying this. So in a week or two weeks or three weeks, this could move. And then I buy like, you know, three months, six months out or something like that. But you have to, it still has to be something with a decent amount of institutional interest. Otherwise there's going to be no fuel for a long gamma type play like that. You may get to 170, but it may just like Tortuga along there. And then you're just going to get eaten up in theta and your gamma is not going to work for you. You only want to be long calls if you feel like, Hey, I'm really bullish on the stock and there's institutional interest and there's impulsivity to it and there's volatility to it. If volatility goes down while you're long gamma, then you're like, maybe you're right on the direction, but you're going to be losing money on the volatility. So you're, you're fighting one force while having another one work for you. You don't want that options. You want as many of the Greeks working for you as possible. Got it. Um, yeah. And maybe on that note, we should just look into the option flow right now. See if you're seeing any like institutions having their eye on any certain stocks. Uh, Jut from the chat is asking, can we do Sam as well? Boston Beer Co. That's one I was talking about uh, yeah. previously on the show on a power hour right before get technical. Because uh, we saw we saw Boston Beer just get hammered down off of news that, um, you know, seltzers weren't selling as well as they had been. Um, but something that caught my eye when I was looking at this was it did seem like we had at least some amount of institutions coming in and buying shares of the stock at the at the current price. And if you look at the analyst ratings, like the average price target for the analysts is mm -hmm. like upward of like a thousand dollars. So it seems like they're if the analysts know what they're talking about, it seems like there is significant upside potential there. We got to look at what is their time horizon for their forecast? Is that a 12 month? Is that, you know, uh, an 18 month? Is that a 24 month? A thousand dollars, you know, maybe a year or two down the line. Generally, though, most analysts are going to be, you got to look at analysts. They are paid in one way or another to be more bullish than the market actually is. You know, that's that's what an analyst job really is, is that they don't get, they, they're not going to be a big analyst if they're constantly bearish on things. That's why analysts as a whole traditionally are going to be more bullish. So you have to account for that extra bullish bias kind of built into the nature of Wall Street and an analyst job. So when I look at a thousand, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Here's what I see from the options perspective on Sam. Again, it's not a big options player prior to today. And I could check and see what's going on with today. But prior to today, you only had 16,000 calls and about 14,000 puts. 30,000 options on a three-figure stock. Now, when I look at today's option statistics, and again, this is this has so few options that they don't even have weekly option expires. It's monthly OPEX on it. Wow. So it's not it's not a big option player. Today alone, we only have a thousand options. And there's about 30,000 in the market. So you're talking about 3% of the total volume. It's not attracting a lot of interest. 
Today's volume is 160K. The 10 day is 420. It's not going to make that 420K today. It's not going to make that. It'll maybe get to 3320 at best. That's it. So it's not something that's kind of spiking from a relative volume perspective, either on the share side or on the option side. So either you're buying because you know something that they don't, or um, you're just trying to buy way in advance and not really caring about the short-term fluctuations. When I look at the structure of it, I see mostly September, October bets on it, but I don't really see this getting above six and a quarter. I think the monthly view up would hold this here. So yeah, there's a little bit of two-way price action in this candle. Anytime you see an impulsive run and then you see like one of these candles that has a decent size wick on the top side and bottom side, that's a two-way candle is what I call it. That means that there's order flow on both sides of the market. There's clearly some bidding interest because if there wasn't, there wouldn't be a wick spike to the upside, but yet the selling pressure is still there. That's why there's the wick to the downside and the market's holding at this kind of even place here. So there's a relative balance, but we're not seeing that balance happen through volume increase. We're seeing it through a volume decrease. So, you know, I'm kind of looking at that and I feel like I wouldn't want to sell at these current prices and I definitely wouldn't want to buy. I think on a rally to 600 or 625, I think this is a sell. Um, you know, I would need to see more. I'm seeing no transitions in the price section. I'm seeing no institutional interest. And so I would need to see more just to want to get long options on this. Um, I could easily see this going down to potentially... I can see it's going down to about 502 before we really start to find a base. Wow. I mean, this is a gangster drop in one week, 956 to 702. That's a, that's a huge drop in one week. That yeah. Is it's showing a lot drop. of institutions, uh, you know, are selling there and Jay's in the chat saying it, it was a high PE name that had a bad quarter. So it's guilty till proven. I, I kind of agree with you there, Jay. Uh, Justin in the chat saying if Benzinga adds, um, the options universe to their platform, they would kill it. So on Benzinga Pro, we do have an unusual option scanner. Um, mm -hmm. So I have that pulled up on my on my computer right now. So you will get alerts that say, you know, Palantir Technologies options alert, January 2023, $20 puts sweep near the bit. You know, so we'll get the alerts for unusual options, but I'm not sure if we have the, uh, you know, exact flow data like you were talking about from the OCC. Yeah, I've been, I've been, you know, I mentioned this to Neil actually months ago before we even started Get Technical that I feel like one of the biggest value adds that Benzinga, I think Benzinga Pro is an amazing value for me. It's like the most, out of all the apps I have outside of my platform, I would say the Benzinga Pro app and then my, um, my trading journal analytics program is my two most valuable apps out there. So, you know, the app itself has amazing value as is. But if Benzinga ever wanted to like take away market share from the options universe, if they were to move into this space of creating the programs and the systems to analyze and collate the actual flow data, the Benzinga Pro app would go through the roof. Because right now there's only about three people on the planet that are really collating this data on any professional basis. And you being and one of them. Well, I know, I mean, like not individual traders. I mean, like there's there's a few companies out there that are doing it, but it's very hard to do it. And you have to have experience and options. If Benzinga did this, it would create a whole new vertical and a whole new value add for Benzinga Pro that I would literally get rid of any other programs or services or data subscriptions I have to get it specifically through Benzinga Pro. Like that's that would take Benzinga Pro to the next level. I pitched it to Jason Rasnick. He basically gave me like a, a one sentence, like, okay, yeah, it's whatever. It, it just wasn't, yeah, he wasn't, he didn't seem that engaged in it. And part of the reason why I've done this show is to create more interest in education in that, because I think if Benzinga wants to like break out into a new vertical and dominate the options market and take it to the next level, the Benzinga product to the next level, this is the path to do it. There's, you guys are constantly adding stuff and I love it. And I think it's great, but I got to be honest, from my personal experience, when I look at the unusual options activity, a lot of times it doesn't quite match up with something that I would qualify as unusual or something that really stands out. And so you need flow data to find things that stand out and you need to be able to translate that data 
to see what's happening with the dealers and market makers. That will really tell you when things are standing out and when there's dislocations and volatility or price, or we're coming into certain gamma locations where the market makers will have to buy going into it, or they'll have to sell going into it. It would take Benzinger Pro to the next level. It would totally take Benzinga Pro to the next level. And so I that's, agree a hundred percent. I actually did this. So I pitched and the best I got was get technical. And so I'm grateful for that. And so we'll, <laughs> you know, I'll just keep pitching until until you Benzinga executives finally start listening to me. Well, I, I we'll we'll have to talk uh, you know, off stream because I want to get some more insight from you about that. And I can see if there's something I can do to try to push that through the finish line because I agree a hundred percent with you that. Um, you know, I want to see that on the platform and I agree on the unusual options front that to me, it's like, it, it doesn't add a terrible amount of value to me because like, I'll look at a stock on there and there'll be big orders coming in for calls and big orders coming in from puts. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this data? Um, so definitely, uh, yeah, Chris, that's your, your spot on there. We're, 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 we're seeing, we're seeing the same on this one here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, do we have time for uh, another call out or what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, take a tick. We got time for one more ticker out of the chat. Um, another idea that we brought up before, Chris, was if we if we ranked, if we gave each stock a letter grade on how mm. good it is for trading options. So, you know, mm. like a Roblox or a Snapchat would be an A. Uh, SMG would be like a D, you know, like mm. not a great stock. A SAM would be like a D, not a great stock to, to trade uh, options on. I think that would be helpful for a lot of beginner traders to know um, you know, if, if this stock is a good one to trade options on. I could see that being useful. It was the, how you grade it would have to have a little bit of nuance to it. Like, okay, is it not great from a directional perspective? Because it may not be great from a directional perspective, but it may be great from a volatility perspective, i.e. long or short volatility. So you would have to find different ways to grade, you know, to kind of grade those stocks. Um, it wouldn't, you couldn't just do it on a one dimensional grading type thing. Um, but yeah, if you could start to grade options based upon, hey, this has in volatility plays, this is an A or it's an F, you know, or something like that. Hey, in terms of directional plays, this is an A or it's an F, you know, then we would st we would be able to start grading it based upon, you know, what really affects option pricing, which is the Greeks and flow. That's that's what affects option pricing more than anything. Greeks and flow. And we think about the Greeks, it's volatility. It's time, it's gamma and delta. Those four. Those those are the biggest, you know, pricing factors in terms of options. In terms of, you know, directions, that's going to depend upon flow and volatility. Maybe the volatility isn't there right now, but the flow could be suggesting, hey, we're going to get a big expansion of volatility or we're going to get a big contraction of volatility. So that could definitely, in my opinion, add a lot of value. But once you start getting the flow data in, Benzinga Pro becomes now Benzinger Pro becomes a dominant option market player and you start taking that market share away from everybody and you have the list to do it. You have the list to do it. You have the software to do it. You have the data technicians to do it. You, you know, there's, you just got to partner with the right people who understand the options universe to tell you how to get that data and then use it and then offer it to your clients. A hundred percent. I agree, Chris. I, I, I do think we, we ran out of time there discussing our, our various ideas, but... <laughs> Don't think it's a waste. I think they're great ideas. Well, yours maybe more so than my letter grade one, but that nonetheless, um, I got your second skies Forex link in the chat. Um, Chris also has a YouTube channel. I'll drop that in the chat. And, and as always, Chris, it was great to have you on. Good seeing you everybody. Be well. Thank you. All right, y'all. Now we have moon or bust coming up right now. They're doing an open Q and a kind of, uh, you know, education just on the crypto space in general. So if you have any questions about different cryptos, different altcoins, stick around, we're going to go head over from here to moon or bust. Don't go anywhere starting right now.